Quantum computing works by exploring many possible pathways at the same time. If you hit a dead end, you don't need to go back and try another route, like in the classical example, but a new version of you splits off to explore the different routes, all thanks to the quantum property of superposition. If all of this sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, then you'd better be ready. We're about to show you tangible evidence that supports these ideas, just as Professor Deutsch himself has discussed. When a quantum computer is built, a small quantum computer with a few thousand qubits, that, that's the quantum analog of bits, in other words, a very, very weak, comparatively weak quantum computer could perform more computations simultaneously than could be performed by the entire visible universe. But where does that computational power truly come from? To begin answering that, we first need to take a step back and look at one of the most famous experiments in quantum physics, the double slit experiment. Suppose you fire individual photons, like tiny flashlights, at a barrier with two slits. If photons were just particles, we'd expect them to go through one slit or the other, forming two distinct lines on the screen behind them, right? But that's not what happens. They create a strange pattern, a series of bright and shadow bands, as if each photon behaves like a wave. This is the famous double slit result. What Professor Deutsch described in his book was nothing short of astonishing. He wrote, when a photon passes through this setup, it goes through one slit, but something else interferes, deflecting it based on which other slits are open. The uh, conclusion that we draw is that this thing behaves like light in every way we can detect experimentally except one, and that is we can't detect it. It is there because it pushes aside the light that we can see. For the sake of argument, call this thing a shadow particle. Different interference patterns emerge depending on which slits are cut, meaning shadow photons must be landing all over the screen whenever a real photon arrives. And so, there must be far more shadow photons than tangible ones. Professor Deutsch then elaborated that all these shadow particles, collectively, we might think of as a parallel universe, for they, too, are affected by tangible particles, but only through interference phenomena. They are real matter, real energy, real light that we cannot see, and so they are an entire parallel world of matter, energy, and light. That's why we call it a parallel universe, and there are many of them. 